Okay, as you can see, I've got the bypass valve set up in a vise. I've got a dial indicator on it, uh, and we're going to basically watch it move, although the amount that it moves isn't as important as the fact that you see this dial moving back and forth. So it's on top of the valve, right? We saw earlier that was the valve that, that moves in and out. That's what's going to allow air to move from one side to the other. This up here is the port that the vacuum would be attached to. So. We'll hook up our vacuum gauge to this. I happen to know that this one's already leaking, so I'm going to put my finger on the side that's leaking. Just to plug it off, and as we add some vacuum to it, if we can get it in there correctly. There you go. See the valves open, closed. Open, closed. There you go. Now we move on to your bypass valve. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver, technically posi drive. There's a spring inside, so just kind of keep a grip on it. Okay, there we go. That's it. So you'll have your spring. You have this little bit. There we go. That's what adjusts it. You will have your diaphragm. Which if you're very careful, you can get a screwdriver in, just gently flex. Careful not to scratch everything, this is soft metal. That's it. So this is your diaphragm. That's a little brass valve that just moves back and forth. And again, what this does is it just seals. Uh, you see there's two holes. It seals basically between those two. So you can, uh, uh, you stop the flow of fuel moving through that, well, from bypassing the throttle plate. That's what this does. Now to open it, uh, on the carburetor, that's these little holes. They all line up. You get a vacuum that gets created in here. And what you are doing is that vacuum is opening this valve. That's how it works. So how do you control how much vacuum you need? That's what this screw is. The more that's screwed out, the tighter that spring starts. And so that's how you adjust the pressure that's uh, or rather the, the lack thereof, negative pressure, that's how you adjust how much it's going to take uh, before it's going to open that valve. Don't touch this unless you have a reason to. Uh, there's a screw on the end and in earlier versions of this there was not a brass plug, this was actually open. And so if that were the case, you'd be able to take a screwdriver and you can make adjustments to it. Uh, I know that you can drill this out, but at the same time, be careful doing that because you could create a vacuum leak. But the part that always wears is this diaphragm. Uh, if this doesn't come in a kit, make sure that you know whether it does, but I don't believe that this comes in the standard carburetor rebuild kit. Get these, it's going to be junk. And what you're going to want to do Again, having not rotated this, be careful not to move it. Put that back in. Put the spring back in. We're going to pretend this is another diaphragm. Line all of the holes back up. And just press it on.
mate the surfaces together, make sure that the spring goes in. You're going to want to hold it together with your fingers. Just get one of the screws kind of seated in. And then it's not going to come apart. So you can get the other screws in place. That's it. This is ready to go back on the car. If you happen to have a vacuum gauge uh, with a, a small adapter, put it on this tiny hole here and create a vacuum. And if it doesn't leak out, then you're pretty much good to go. Uh, you could do something like what we uh, did earlier in the last video, I think it was, where uh, you've got a dial indicator on there. You could see the valve moving in and out. You can do that if you want, uh, just to verify that it's operational. But really, until you get it on the car, you're not going to know anyway. Uh, but I would recommend, if you have one, put a vacuum gauge on that and just make sure that it's actually holding a vacuum. If it's leaking out very quickly, then obviously it's leaking somewhere you want to find out where. But this will cause uh, massive running issues if it's leaking. And there you have it. Okay, what we have here is our starter box, also known as a choke. And this is from a different car, but actually I realized I forgot to film this when I took it apart. So, uh, we're just going to do this one for you instead. It's basically the same part. So, uh, you want to start off, uh, obviously get it off the car. This is a 7 16 few pieces here come off it's probably a good example since this one's kind of frozen onto the car anyway Wiggle it back and forth. You may need to do a little bit of prying with a screwdriver, but again, just like normal, don't go nuts on it because you're really just going to break it. There's a spring underneath. You want to make sure that's coming off with it too. outside parts. Make sure that you note what this looks like on the inside before you take it apart. But then this pops right out. Okay, and there is a small clip here. You may need a screwdriver or something to pull it off. Just be careful you don't lose it. See? Don't lose the spring. This should come apart. There we go. If you can't get it apart all the way, that's okay. It should come apart at least far enough that you should be able to get some carburetor cleaner, uh, spray it in there, make sure all of these holes, the passageways are clear. Uh, don't go digging them out. And those are, again, everything's engineered. It's a specific size. You just want it to be clean. Once you do that, and again, on the carb that, that you're about to see, I've already done this work. I just kind of want to show you how it comes apart and goes together. Clean out all the pieces. Make sure there's no gunk or anything that's in there. And then from that point, you are ready to reassemble it. So, when you do that, put the spring back on. Get the clip in. Okay, 
I have already forgotten which way this goes. So, if you forget, take a look at your carburetor. Okay, and on your carb, you have this is where the starter box would go. So, what actually happens is you've got this goes into the the airstream. This is what's going into the engine. This hole here. And from this hole, that's where you've got extra fuel if you need it. So, now you've got a series of small holes. Those will line up with this. So, it twists, and as it twists, you get more of the small holes that line up with the top. This big bit down here always lines up with the fuel hole. It's always connected. So, if in doubt, make sure that this hole lines up with that one that is the correct orientation and then obviously you can figure out this goes this way so when you go to put it together it needs to be like that okay so that only goes one direction this is going to go on like that so that would be correct make sure that the spring is on first The spring obviously is meant to close the choke, so you want to make sure that it's set up to do exactly that. It's a little bit finicky, but you'll get it. Once that's back on, put on the spacer, the lock washer, and the nut. Tighten it back down, and we're good to go. Check the operation, and see when you pull on the choke, as I said, moves these in pieces internally. That is literally all this does. This is just a, a passageway, it's a valve, that lets more fuel come from the float bowl into the other end of the carb. And what I'm going to do is first of all focus on this. Got a bit of wire here. This is where the fuel would go in once allowed to by the starter box. And you can see, given some more light, you can see that it's going inside the carburetor on the side of the throttle plate. So when the choke is open, it lets fuel from here into that hole which goes straight into the engine. That's all it's doing. The other bit that it's doing, and I've said this already, is you have this cam which opens up. There is supposed to be a screw on this but that's gone missing and it opens up the carburetor just a little bit, lets more fuel and air in. That's it. And that raises your idle speed, enriches the mixture, that's all it does. Okay. Okay, I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, to set the temperature compensator, uh, first, just a trick, get a piece of wire so that you don't have to necessarily hold it. Uh, you'll want some water and a thermometer. This water right now is 119.8. It's as near as makes no difference, 120. Technically, this should be starting to open about 115, about halfway open at 125. By the time it gets to 140 degrees, this should be fully open. That's all Fahrenheit, obviously. 
And what you want to do, I'm not going to adjust this one. This is already frozen solid and this is basically junk. But just to give you the concept, put it in the water. It should adjust really quickly when that happens. And what you want to do is look to see, is the valve opening? If you can't see it very easily, uh, the trick, get a flashlight, shine it in, especially if you have something glass, it'll be easier to see. If you can see light inside, uh, then you know that the valve is open. You need to make an adjustment, take it out, rinse it under cold water. There's the adjustment nut right there. Make it a little tighter, a little bit looser, small bits at a time. Make sure that your water temperature hasn't changed. Put it back in. And just check it at various temperatures. At, at 120 degrees, it should be kind of open. At, at 115, it should be just barely starting. 125, it should be about halfway. Keep making small adjustments until you're satisfied that it's, that it's about right. And my understanding is that it's more important to have uh, the two temperature compensators even than it is to have the exact temperature. So if you've got a twin carb set up, uh, you want to make sure that they're reacting at the same rate. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's the concept. Again, I'm not going to do it with this one because this is already junk uh, and the ones on the carbs are working fine, so I'm not going to touch them. Normally, you don't have to touch these, uh, but if you're curious, that's, that's the procedure that you can find online as well.